So what is going on YouTube? My name is Mehul and welcome back to another video in which I'm going to show you how you can post data to server using Swift UI. And for that, we need to make use of the new framework which comes with Swift UI that is Combine. So just go ahead at the top and first of all, import Combine, which is going to actually give you the ability to write publishers and listeners. Now, I'm not going to get into a lot of depth in, into Combine as of now because I have other plans for that. But what I can just tell you is that Apple introduced Combine in order to simplify async operations. And it does not matter what kind of async operation it is, whether it's an, an HTTP request or maybe a timer or maybe an async read from the file system. It does not matter. You are in control. So what we have in here is the simple login application as of now, nothing fancy here. But what we want to do is once I click on this button, I want uh, a request to be performed, right? So what we could do in that case is we could, first of all, we need a class which would perform our HTTP request that is which would be managing our HTTP request. So how do we do that? I'm just going to go ahead and create a regular class and we would say that this is HTTP auth and I'm going to conform it to bindable object, right? So once you conform it to a bindable object, what happens now is that you need to implement something known as did change, right? And did change and what this is, this is just a pass through subject which would eventually return HTTP auth and we say that it never fails, right? So what this did change means is that we're going to call this did change anytime we want whatever, whatever struct this class is using, whatever class this struct is using to update. Now this might sound a little bit complicated but what happens is this is a view right. What we are doing is we will be in introducing this HTTP auth class here somewhere but because we want this thing to remain async we want some sort of callback some sort of feedback that yep the update has completed. So that callback or that feedback would be fired within this class and once it's fired we're going to fire did change within this class, which is going to notify its parent view that something has changed and it's time to kind of like, you know, look at the state, take a look at the state variables. Something has changed. You might want to re-render or display some text or anything, right? So that's the crux. So let's get into it and implement it. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to create a variable called authenticated and I'm going to set it to false initially. And what I'm going to do is once it's set, I'm going to fire this did change and I'm going to say it's send and I'm going to update that. So when, once I fire this thing, what happens is this struct, this view gets informed that this authenticated variable right here is changed, right? Otherwise, if you don't in introduce this block, then it's just a regular variable. All right, so what we want to do now is I want to conditionally fire, um, actually check the authentication details. So I'm going to say that this is a check details function, which accepts username as a string and password as a string, right? So that's what we want. So let me just quickly go ahead and create a regular um, thing we do with the URL with the HTTP request in Swift and what we want to supply in here is basically if we take a look I actually have um, a terminal I have a dummy server already there but if you want you can do this on your production server or whatever you have so I'm just gonna go over here and say Swift server and I'm gonna say this index.js so you see that this is a simple server right here which uses express our node server right and the valid credentials as we see right now is admin and admin and we see that it returns us a 
JSON with a status and message as the key. Right? So, yep, let's just go ahead and implement this. First of all, I'm just going to fire off the server real quick. And I'm also going to encroc HTTP 3000 so that we get a HTTPS URL here because I don't want to mess around with the ATS settings right now. So we can just do something like this, right? So if I post my data to this URL, it's going to return me something, right? All right, so once we have this in place, what I want to do is I want to actually post this data to this particular URL. And let me just adjust my seat here real quick. And there we go. All right, so our body, and actually we just want to return if it's not able to create this URL. Our body consists of this, which we would eventually convert into JSON. So that's why I'm using a dictionary syntax. I'm gonna say username is username and password. Oops, oops, Xcode, you did a lot of undo there. But anyway, there we go. Now, what I want to do is I just want to say that my final body, how it should look like, is json serialization dot data and with json object that is our body right and no options as of now so once we do that what we need to do is now we need to create a request and how do we create a request it's just regular swift stuff not swift ui actually so i'm gonna set its http method to be post and request.http body to be final body which is what we created right here which is now json data and uh, what i want to do finally is say that we want to set a header of application json for content type so that our backend is uh, successfully able to decode what sort of data we are sending so once we have those many details and let's see what we have in here okay so we can just force say that this should work this is obviously not you should what you should follow in production but anyway i'm just going to go with that for now you can just replace it with this and just check final body one more time but i'm too lazy for that so anyway starting off with url session dot shared dot data task which would allow us to fire a request what we want to do is once this request is done, we're going to get data, response, and error right back to us, right? And what I'm going to say, obviously we need to resume here too. What I'm going to just say is we want to actually know what the server responded. And as you can see, the server right here responds with a JSON thing. So we need additional part to decode this particular um json data we are getting back from the server because right now if we just go ahead and print this data let's see what we're gonna get so if we just go ahead and build this we're gonna see that inside the simulator if i go ahead and write anything like admin admin and hit login what we're gonna get right here is Oops, actually nothing because we're not calling this function at all. So let's just fix that part first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna say that this right here is um I don't know, let's just say this is my uh manager is http auth, right? And once I click this button right here, I'm gonna say manager dot check details username is self.username and password is self.password right uh, let's just go ahead and see how it looks like okay we need a self here too and there we go now if we take a look here in the simulator so if i enter details like admin admin now and hit login what we're gonna see right here is we get some sort of 61 bytes back from the server but what is it 
it's some sort of JSON response which we need to decode. So how are we going to do that? First of all, we can just make sure that our data is already actually present there or not. Otherwise, the app would crash on the runtime. So we can just throw in a guard there. Data is data, else return. So that would take care of that. So now what I want to do is I actually want to decode this data into JSON object, into actually a dictionary, which we can use in Swift UI. And it's, it, there's a pretty simple way to do that if you know the format of your JSON. And in our case, we know that the keys are just status and message. So what we need to do is we can just quickly go over here and create a struct describing how our JSON looks like. So I'm going to say this is struct server message and M-E-S-S-A-G-E. -S yep. And this conforms to decodable protocol. Now, a lot of magic happens here. Now, although you need to conform it to decodable protocol, but in the very basic usage, you just need to give it just the keys you're expecting in your JSON. So we're going to do that right now. I'm going to just say let status and message is what we expect. And both are string. So we are good to go there. And that's it. Right. So once we have the server message with us, what we can do now is we could pretty much go ahead and say that our final data is JSON decoder, which should decode with respect to the server message. <clears throat> and the data is from this data variable. Right. <clears throat> and once we do that, what we could just do and just go ahead and print the final data so that we can take a look. All right, and I guess we need a try here as well, and we should be good to go. So once we go ahead and build this solution, what we should see is on our simulator, now if I go ahead and say admin admin and hit login, we can see right here, we get server message with status error and message incorrect username and password, right? Which is exactly what we want. All right, so once we have that in place, things are now easy to do. So what I can just do is I can just go ahead and say if final data, final data dot status is OK. That means we are hitting this particular case. Then the message contains admin token, which we can further use in order to communicate with server. But I'm not going to get into that right now. <clears throat> I'm just going to say that our authenticated variable is now true right and since you cannot dispatch ui updates these kind of updates on the background thread remember your network happens on the background thread so what you want to do is just fire a dispatch queue dot main dot async to dispatch it on the main thread so once you do that what happened now is your authenticated variable which we had right here, this became true, right? So now that means that we are authenticated. So what does that mean? Well, that actually means that now we can actually make use of this authenticated variable in our view. And how do we do that? Well, the first thing is we need to enclose this manager in a state. Again, remember, it's not a static thing. It can change over time. So we're going to include that in state. Now for now, what I'm going to do is just display a pop up message, not really a pop up, but just a text view that you're authenticated. So I'm going to say if manager dot authenticated is true, what we want is just a text saying you are authenticated. Right. And we could just give it a font of come on. Xcode help me here. Headline. And yeah, I guess that should be fine. So if I just go ahead and build the solution one more time, what we're going to see is um, if I write something which is wrong and hit login, nothing happens. Right. But if I just go ahead and write the correct credentials right here, admin and admin and hit login what we're going to see is we get this nice little message you are authenticated right so this is how 
you're gonna perform an HTTP request in Swift UI and get it get its response back and kind of use it as well in your view. So that's all for this video. In the next one, we're gonna see how we can make use of this thing to actually implement a navigation kind of thing so that once the user logs in, we redirect the user to the dashboard screen. So yeah, that's all for this video. If you liked it, please don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you then in the next video.